So, Ashley, your paper reports that more than 80,000 women get an abortion in Florida in a typical year, accounting for about one out of every 12 abortions nationwide. Talk about the impact this one state will have uh, on women, not only in Florida, obviously, but listening to Marissa and reading uh, the reporting of your paper, women all across the Southeast. That's right. I mean, you each state that is now that uh, Roe is overturned making its own decisions raises a sort of different issue in the national discussion. And most of these issues politically are not particularly good for Republicans. So in Florida, we're now talking about a number of women um, being unable to get an abortion at, at a point where they they don't know they're pregnant, right? And, and when you talk to women, um, e even Republican suburbans independent who are going to decide this election, um, a lot of them say that feels incredibly draconian. You have other states where the discussion is now, um, depending on the laws, about women who are unable to get an abortion, um, not because they don't want the baby, sometimes because they desperately do want the baby, but it's a risk to their health. So women who are enduring uh, horrific health consequences because they can't get an abortion. Abortion. That, again, politically in states like Florida and elsewhere is not a discussion that Republicans uh, want to be having. And it's worth noting that the Biden campaign in um, a memo said that in part because of what we're seeing in Florida, they think Florida is now, quote unquote, winnable. Florida is a state that had largely been written off uh, the political map. Trump won it twice. Uh, governor DeSantis uh, for governor won it by huge margins. You know, it's also worth saying that even when Democrats would privately tell you they didn't think they could win in Florida. They still sort of publicly said, we're going to play there. We want to make Republicans uh, spend money. But this gives them um, one more tool in their arsenal to to either really believe that Florida is in play or at least force Republicans to really fight them there. Jim, you don't have to look very far to see what the results of the overturning of Roe v. Wade have been. Um, for example, your folks uh, uh, from Axios report that in um, Charlotte, and again, a lot of the folks from places uh, in the southeast who don't have access to abortion go to North Carolina, that clinics in North Carolina are running short on time, space, and staff. That's Axios' reporting. So when Donald Trump says, and this was his quote, that this has taken tremendous pressure off of everybody, who or what is he trying to message? Because no one objectively yeah. looking at it can say that. I think he probably is talking about himself. He's trying to take pressure off himself from a political perspective. And, and listen, it's a very political topic. There's no doubt that the president and, and, and the... Uh, and the vice president feel very strongly about this as a policy measure. But if you look at the last off year election, if you look at even some of these special elections, abortion has been a very powerful motivator for Democrats, particularly women voters who've been gravitating uh, towards the Democratic Party. When you talk to the Trump people, in some ways they boil down this election to men versus women. They believe they're going to lose a chunk of, of women who might have voted for them because of the abortion topic. That's why they play up crime and kind of mass masculinity and a lot of the rhetoric that he uses because they're seeing some movement of black men and Hispanic men away from uh, fighting. And so I think Trump, I mean, listen, I've talked to him over the years. I've talked to his people. I don't think this is a topic he particularly wants to deal with or even thinks uh, much about, but he just wants to kick it down uh, to the states. The problem is, is the, the kind of this segment you're having here, when you kick it down to the states and you start to get down to a six week uh, ban, well, then suddenly there probably is a, a political reality to what Ashley was saying. Maybe a state like Florida that probably isn't that much in play or wasn't that much in play suddenly could be if you have a segment of voters who are so fired up about a topic because it's personal to them that they then vote. And, and we don't know that that will happen, but it's certainly a very plausible theory. Well, this is what the Republican state representative who uh, proposed that six week abortion yeah. ban had to say in defense of it. Florida is a pro-life state. We're a conservative state. We've always been moving in a pro-life direction. We should not be we should not be allowing abortions, and we certainly shouldn't be providing abortion tourism for other states in the South. I think the change, and, and I'm yep. curious your perspective on this, there is no doubt that Florida that used to be up for grabs has shifted even in registration to yep. Republican. Being Republican doesn't always align with being necessarily conservative or being against yeah. abortion rights, even if you are personally opposed to abortion. Yeah. So to what extent is that true, but 
problematic, really, for, for Donald Trump. Again, it's, it, 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 this isn't at its essence a political topic, but it is. Uh, it, I mean, it is a, could, in politics. could Joe yeah. Biden make a real play for Florida? It, it, maybe, but even in the other states, I'd be a lot, if I'm a Republican or I'm a Democrat, the, listen, the election, sadly, our, most of our votes don't actually matter that much unless you're in seven states. And in those seven states, if you look at the polls, if you look at the voting history in recent elections, in all likelihood, they're going to be determined by maybe 100,000 votes. Remember last election, you move 40,000 votes in three states, Trump wins. Yeah. Election before, you move 78,000 votes and Trump loses. It's like, it is going to be a narrow vote. So when you find an issue that motivates people because it is a personal issue, it really could prove decisive. Now, does that expand the map, which is fundamentally the question you're asking? Does that mean now a Florida or, or Ohio or someplace that wasn't in play? Could it be in play? Possibly, but Florida has become very, very conservative in recent years and really kind of in a very fast way moved towards the Republican column. So, Dana, let's move to Arizona. What can we expect to happen with that 1864 abortion ban? Yeah, Chris, well, Democrats believe they have enough votes, including two Republicans who will allow this repeal to go through. But keep in mind, even if they repeal, if they vote to repeal in the Senate and the governor signs it as expected, they already uh, approved it in the House, it will still take 90 days after the legislative session ends before this repeal could be in effect. So we know that last year they were in session all the way up through July 31st. That gives you an indication here. I've stepped inside already and right now they are in session. The public gallery is full with opponents and supporters who were standing at one point inside that gallery as they wait for their senators to make a decision on this 1864 law that has been very controversial. And most people in the state of Arizona overwhelmingly have said they want at least some access to abortion, whether it's for 15 weeks or at least allows for rape and incest. So we'll be watching. We're going to step inside. They believe they can pass this. But also one Democratic senator told me that she's cautiously optimistic because there could be stall tactics, which they have seen in prior weeks that have happened. So they hope that they can push this vote through. We are told that that could come down within the next couple of hours and it would be huge. There's no indication that Governor Katie Hobbs is willing to sign it today. The House Speaker, it's his job to actually deliver that bill to her. So that could also play, politics could also play in, in that next move to get this to the governor's desk. A Chris? very consequential afternoon ahead. Thank you, Dana Griffin, Ashley Parker, Jim Vandehei. Congrats on the book, Just the Good Stuff. Appreciate you all coming in.